It's a fun morning show. Tuesday morning, October 8th, 2024. Actress Bella Thorne from Disney's Shake It Up. She also has some other exposure out there lately. She is 27 years old today. Happy birthday to Fun 107 superstar. Bruno Mars turns 39 today. Happy birthday to Matt Damon. The biggest actor to ever come out of Cambridge, Mass., is 54. Chevy Chase, he's got a birthday today, so how big is this birthday? This is a full-blown four-alarm emergency here. Clark Griswold is 81. Movie mogul Harvey Weinstein officially fired seven years ago today for harassment after more than 80 women accused him of inappropriate behavior. Weinstein's firing sparked the whole Me Too movement. Martha Stewart went to prison on this date in 2004. She was convicted of lying to the FBI about illegal trading on her company. Life on Mars on this date, 1997, the Mars Pathfinder found the strongest evidence yet that there was once life on Mars. And in 2014, the very... Fun 107, Michael... And Gazelle, it's the fun morning show at 6.09, and uh, looks like we're going to see a few clouds today, a few a few patches of sunshine and highs up in the 60s, and uh, it is 56 now. Bringing you a taste of Hollywood right here to the South Coast, and we are here for it. We're spilling the tea with the entertainment update presented by Kia of Dartmouth on the South Coast number one hit music station. Well, guess who has surprised Rihanna as the richest female musician of all time? If you had Taylor Swift, you are correct. And after her incredible Eras tour, Taylor is now worth $1.6 billion, cruising past Rihanna's $1.4 billion. What a loser. (laughs) <laughs> Just, what a flex. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, Rihanna made a ton of money on, on her makeup line. Yeah, and exactly. so she's doing very well with that. But, uh, yeah, uh, Taylor is now worth 1.6, edging out Rihanna just a little bit with uh, her 1.4. I think Rihanna's going to be okay. How's the uh, – what about Travis? What's he at? These oh, my days? goodness. He's nowhere near billions. Does he have at least millions? Of course. Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So his net worth is – But but I'm talking about, like, is it a huge gap between him and yes. Tay? It's Ooh, a huge that, that's for- <laughs> Swift's Eras Tour is the biggest money-making tour ever, pulling in over $2 billion for 125 shows. That translates into 16 mil per show. That's insane. That's not a bad payday. A lot of T-shirts. By the way, it looks like all is well with Taylor and Travis Kelsey. She was back in the Chiefs' home crowd last night for Monday Night Football. Chiefs beat the Saints 26 Of course they did. Kanye West and Bianca Sensori are possibly headed for divorce. Apparently, the couple has hit a rough patch in their almost two-year marriage. Looks like Ye and Bianca have been telling people around them that they split up a few weeks ago with uh, the Yeezy architect heading down to Australia to spend time with her family since they split. And while there's no word on what prompted the breakup or who pulled the plug on the relationship uh we're hearing that Ye has been telling people close to him that he plans to live and move to tokyo <laughs> okay and to divorce bianca word on the street is uh he's getting soft like that she's making him soft what do you mean physically what no mm, no mentally mentally soft so you know kanye is a bad boy he does whatever kanye wants kanye this kanye that and uh, I guess ever since they met, he's been a little bit more tamed, which is not a bad thing. No. But Wives can do that to, to husbands sometimes. I am speaking truth of it. Okay? Yeah. His creativeness, his music has just been non-existent because ever since she walked into the scene. So his, his artistic flow has been stomped on. Well, lately they've been doing separate activities, and that's been kind of a tip-off that things, you know, weren't exactly great. Well, we'll see a new Tokyo album coming out next year, hopefully. Sissy Houston, two-time Grammy-winning singer and mother of Whitney Houston, has died. She was 91 years old. 
She won Grammy Awards in the 1990s for her gospel albums. Uh, but she could be heard performing during the disco craze of the 1970s as well. And a family statement said Sissy Houston died at her home in Newark, New Jersey yesterday while under hospice care. She, I guess she had Alzheimer's disease, oh, which is a tough one. And down in Florida, uh, there is there was a meteorologist on the NBC affiliate WTVJ, and he was doing an update on the Milton hurricane when he was just overcome by emotions. I mean, this is uh, must be a pretty serious storm when your meteorologist is in tears. It's just an incredible, incredible, incredible hurricane. Uh, it has dropped... It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. Um, I apologize. This is just horrific. Um, winds, maximum sustained winds are 160 miles per hour. And um, it uh, it is just uh, gaining strength in the Gulf of Mexico, where you can imagine uh, the winds, I mean, the seas are just so incredibly, incredibly hot. So you got to know, he just knows what's coming. Oh, yeah. And he knows there's probably going to be loss of life and destruction, and he just lost it on the air. You don't commonly see that. You know, the meteorologists, they go up there, they do their job, they report yeah. it, and it's uh, it is actually, in my opinion, refreshing to see a little bit of uh, emotion behind it. Entertainment update brought to you by Kia of Dartmouth. Get the best deal in, in town on your new Kia with Kia of Dartmouth's exclusive 10% discount on select Kia models. The Fun Morning Show on Fun 107. Going to see some clouds. This morning, we'll see a little bit more sunshine by this afternoon and highs in the mid-60s. Hate to be the one to do this, but ladies and gentlemen. It's beginning to look a lot like... <laughs> Why? October 8th. Put it in your calendar as the day that uh, Christmas started shoving everything else out of the way and became real selfish. What did you see out there? Did you see the Christmas trees at Walmart? Is that what this Not is? Not yet. Not yet. I have. Uh, you have. Wait, really? Christmas trees are at Walmart right now. Oh my God. Everything is just. I have a theory that by, you know, in the next ten years, all the seasons are going to be flip flopped yeah. because it keeps pushing forward. Right. Uh, and then but, eventually it'll come back all the way back around. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, what? hey, it is what it is. As long as everybody gets their fair share. Can we let Halloween in first, please? I mean. That's a pretty big holiday. Can we let Turkey Day in, please? I don't think Halloween's been ever been bigger than it is now, though. I don't. Halloween's big. I'm not seeing it. I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just. I'm not seeing it. I'm I mean, Halloween of, when when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Halloween was a kid's holiday. You got out, you went out, got your candy. End of story. Yeah. Now, like adults celebrate Halloween, inflatable like decorations. You see, people go all out for their outdoor Halloween decorations unlike they ever did. Well, ever did when I was a kid. That's thanks to Home Depot or Lowe's. I think it was Lowe's that came out with that 12 foot, 15 foot skeleton. Yeah. Ever since then, it was like, came all on. right, let's go. What yeah. else can we do? The, what other big conglomerate, you know, size inflatable can we throw in the front the yard? The purple lights and orange lights became yeah. big. If you look down like the Main Street, South Main Street area of Akushnet, they're big down there. On the, really? On the, yeah, it's like a little Halloween little neighborhood. Well, coming to Dartmouth, there's only a select few stores across the country. I want to say, uh, I think there was like 15 of these, and one of them is landing right here in Dartmouth, Spirit Christmas. So now we know Spirit Halloween, which is the absolute tick of uh, chain stores out there. They latch on to places that have just basically died and sucked the remaining blood out of them. <laughs> and uh, I didn't even know that this was a thing, but it's actually, it's it's fairly new. Spirit Christmas is all part of the Spirit uh, franchise. And uh, I got it. Oh, I got it. I'm so embarrassed to say it. I'm excited for this one. I just got a question. So the Spirit Halloween, like that, that's, that's still in uh, the Circuit City building, right? Oh, yeah. So now does and that just turn into Spirit Christmas, or is it a whole different store? No, it'll, it'll turn into it, but, so but not there. flip the switch. Oh, yeah. what do you mean? Oh, you don't know about the controversial Spirit Halloweens in Dartmouth? There's two 1.2 miles apart from each other. 
So you got one at the Circuit City. That's the one I've always known. Yeah. But then recently, the Christmas tree shop. When that went oh, under, sure. that became Spirit Halloween, and that's an even larger store. Is it really? It is. I, I looked into the. I'm surprised by that. Compared to Circuit City, it's a little bit. Circuit City, high ceilings. That's yeah. why it makes it <laughs> appear like it's bigger. So now what they're going to do is the the old Christmas tree shop is still currently Spirit Halloween. You can go in there, get your makeup, get your costumes. But then. November 1st, they flip. See you later. And it's going to be right. I'm telling you right Why now. Why wouldn't they all do that? So this is, I, I read into it. The guy who owns this, he goes out and he gets these one month leases. Oh, sorry. Three month leases. Okay. You don't need three months for Halloween season for, for spirit Halloween. Maybe like a half of that. So he's taking the remainder of that time of the lease and he goes, all right, well, let's utilize it. How about spirit Christmas? All things Christmas makes me wonder because there's very little information on what spirit Christmas is. We have to just endure it together are there going to be christmas costumes because no, you know, i don't think i mean sure i would imagine there was more christmas decorations well i'm circling back to you saying halloween is different the lights the inflatables that was never a thing as a kid so what's going to stop a company from saying you know what let's make costumes for christmas because not many people want to wear a christmas costume. are you sure about that Think about the uprise of the pub crawls around Christmas time. Oh, yeah. Think about okay. the holiday parties. Think about the, well, it's kind of like Friendsgiving where you can kind of celebrate both. But, I mean, there is definitely a market for Christmas costumes. There's already the pajamas that people, the matching pajamas. You know, that's a big trend, so a big fad. they're only doing this at select spirit stores? Why? One in this area. But why not do it to all of them? Like, if you've got the same... Probably just, trial. It's just trial. a trial. Yeah, so yeah. a little beta situation going. But it's pretty cool that we're, we're going to have... This place is going to be mobbed. This is actually good for Dartmouth. I think it's good for the retail um, business. And I just... I want to know what's in it. What, basically, what I'm saying is, what's the difference between Spirit Christmas and the Christmas tree shop? Do you know what I'm saying? Well, the Christmas tree shop sold everything but Christmas things. Oh, True. Actually, you know what I mean? True. Yeah, very true. So it makes all the sense in the world. I, I, I think it's a good idea. Um, it makes me also think, why not apply this to other Halloween things mm -hmm. that ha that instead of only, like, think about, like, Factory of Terror okay. can only do their thing, like, six weeks a year. <laughs> so, so, like, uh, like so, so instead of Factory of Terror, like, after the uh, nightmare, November 1st. The nightmare after Christmas? Flip, just flip over to a Christmas theme. But do they make it scary? Do they? No, keep, they could. Make it a winter wonderland. Uh, not in a factory like that. It's old. It's musty. It's supposed to be like that. They could definitely get away with a nightmare before Christmas it's, kind of thing. It's an old. It's a factory. Make it Santa's factory. Make it a little trip to the North Pole. I say there's both. I say there's both opportunities there. Yeah, you can make it kid friendly, but then. On the weekend nights, you could have like, <laughs> you know, what's the uh, Krampus? You know, there's a bunch yeah. of holiday themed, like Christmas themed evil spirit things out there that people can definitely get yeah, on board with. I mean, you're with. right. Nothing says Christmas like evil. I mean, that's just, I just think of those two things together all the time. I'm just putting these ideas out there. And if anybody makes this come to fruition, I want a cut out of it. That's all I'm saying. Well, spirit Christmas. So it's uh, it's going to flip over November 1st. That's the, is that the deal? So, it, yeah, they didn't even have a, a deal. in the, Oh, oh, hold up on this. This is some VIP stuff right here. So out of all of the Spirit Christmas stores in the country, again, there's about 15 or 20, only 10 of them are going to get visited by the big man himself. And really? Dartmouth made that list. Really? Yes. All right, now. You can find out when Santa's coming down at phone 107com I'd like, I, I get excited. I'd like it. And... I don't know, maybe a few years ago, it just, something flipped in me, and, like, I guess I grew up or whatever, and now, like, the hurricanes freak me out. Like, what's what's happening down in Florida, it's it's nerve-wracking. Yeah. It is. It's like, you know, they're, they're talking about it. Category 5, direct hit into Florida, 165 mile-an-hour winds. I've got some extended family down there. Um and they were going to be, you know, one of my brother-in-law said, hey, just come up to Pittsburgh, you know, drive up here and we'll, we'll, we'll weather the storm up here. And then when it's all gone, you go back down to Florida. They said, yeah, sounds good. You can't get out of here. So like they literally, these people who live in Tampa, 
you can't get gasoline. Yeah. Gas is gone, sold out. If you're lucky enough to have gasoline, you get on the highway to drive north, it is gridlock. You, you're not going anywhere. So it's like impossible. You're trapped. Like, that's not a good time. I got a cousin down in Tampa right now, and her mother is right from, from the Westport area. And she goes on the rant yesterday on Facebook. I'm packing the car. I'm heading down south. And I'm like, Mindy, listen. What, Wait, what? headed down south? Like to go save her daughter. Oh, that's so a bad gonna, idea. It, oh, I trust me. I, I explained that to her. But like that right there makes me feel awful because this is her daughter. And obviously you get the parental instincts. You, you want to go and, you know, be there for your kid, but you're not even going to get close. I don't, I mean, first of all, bring on the airline, you know, c- catastrophe. That's going to be horrible. They're going to be shutting down, uh, Airlines left and right. No one's going to be able to get into Florida in general. You'll be able South to get Coast. in. You just won't be able to get out. You think they're going to fly? Oh, I'm no, I'm talking about be, driving. Uh, oh, yeah, you could drive down. You could drive down. That's going to be clear sailing right in. Then you're going to get it, and then what? Yeah, uh, you're going to be stuck down there. Now, I didn't know about the gas situation. I didn't yeah, know people, are, thing. people are you know gassing up their vehicles. They're gassing up the gas cans so you can run the generators. generators yeah. So, like, you can't buy gas down there right now. Man. It's wild. So this is supposed to hit uh, sometime tomorrow night. And, you know, it's not looking good. Like, it's not looking like there's anything. There's nothing that's going to slow it down, you know, before it hits Florida. That's the thing about Florida. There's not enough land mass for it to slow down. Yeah. It'll go right across it and then make its way up the East Coast. Now, I did reach out real quick to Ceci, uh, and she claims there's nothing right now on the radar for trajectory in our area other than high surf. So we'll, we'll see. Milton is... Well, that's good. Because, again, I've grown up. Keep, yes. those, keep Milton the heck away from here. We don't want any. It is 6.54. And a 90-second news update. Phil Devitt. A 32-year-old man was arraigned Monday on a murder charge in connection with a deadly stabbing in New Bedford last week. Angel Avellino of Lynn is accused of killing 51-year-old Jesus Torres. Avellino was ordered held without bail. Authorities say a fire in New Bedford was accidental. Flames broke out in a house on Ludlow Street Sunday around 10 a.m. One resident was treated for minor burns. Investigators believe a propane tank explosion may have been the cause. Fall River has a new interim police chief. Mayor Paul Coogan has appointed Captain Kelly Furtado to lead the department, replacing Paul Govin. Furtado, a 37-year veteran, has served in various roles, including school resource officer and detective. Govin's departure follows a no-confidence vote from police unions. The push to replace the Cape Cod bridges is taking another step in the right direction. Governor Healy's office announcing that it secured $350 million in federal funds after signing a memorandum of agreement with the Department of the Army and Federal Highway Administration to rebuild the Sagamore Bridge. Senator Warren and Congressman Keating both said the news is huge for the Cape's lifelines. The state has secured more than $1.7 billion in federal funds for the replacements so far. Category 5 Hurricane Milton is growing into a major problem as it's forecast to make landfall in Florida late Wednesday or early Thursday. It's gaining strength as it rolls across the Gulf of Mexico, now clocking it at 180 miles per hour. A 90 mile per hour wind increase on Monday alone. Counties along Florida's west coast have been ordered to evacuate as over 50 are under a state of emergency. And it will soon cost more to play the Mega Millions lottery game. Starting in April, Mega Millions tickets will cost players $5 each. Other changes to the game include a prize multiplier being built in and randomly generated on every ticket sold. In sports, the Bruins are in Florida to play the Panthers tonight at 7. Celtics host the Philadelphia 76ers in the preseason on Saturday. And the Patriots host the Houston Texans at Gillette on Sunday. Traffic and weather next. I'm Phil Devitt for Fun 107. Fun 107, the fun morning show. Going to be a great day today, says Ceci Del Carmen from the ABC6 Weather Center. Lots of sunshine, a few clouds, and highs up in the mid-60s. It's 52 now. I decided to go for a little breakfast yesterday after the show, so I head downtown. And I, I know the hot spots, the secret little spots, where to park and whatnot. But I will say I am a A-plus student when it comes to making sure my meter is fed. And that's all thanks to the app that... Yeah, no, that's a game changer. The the app is good. That Passport app is incredible. And it's there should be no excuses to not use that app. Honestly. 
Well, uh, unless you like an old guy. Yeah, they, all right. Sorry. It's because it's not that simple when you first download it. It's a little clunky. Yeah. But then when you get used to it, you're fine. That's it, because your your information is already saved. It's basically where are you at? For me, a majority of the time, it's places I frequent. So like the 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 number of the meters are already on there. Yeah. Anyway, so yesterday I go there, and I come back, and there was a ticket, and I'm like, well, what the heck? Like, did I not get the no? If if you run out of time, you'll get a notification. Hey, do you want to add more time? Right. And I love that part too. And I'm just noticing, I never got that notification. So now I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to fight the city of New Bedford. How are they gonna see that I actually did it on the app? Has your phone ever connected to somebody's internet and it just doesn't work? Like, it'll say that there's three bars. We call that fake internet. Fake internet. Fake yeah. Wi-Fi, right? They have, right? That, like, fake Wi-Fi at the airport, stuff like that. I was connected to that. So You're when I went to, to hit fake Wi-Fi. confirm, it, like, never went through. So now I'm trying to oh, figure out, do no. I fight this? And how do I explain that? I wish there was a way that they could see my record of how often <laughs> I use well, they yeah, I use it a lot. They don't reward you for an effort. But they should. There should be a point system. Think about it. For people who park downtown because they have to, because they have a business or whatnot, they should 1,000% be like reward points. So he tried. He tried. I, and so I, yeah, I they tried. should get, wave the yeah. so saying, Oh, you know, he's a good guy. He tried. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just wave this fee. How much? 20 bucks. 20 bucks? I thought it was Ted. Me too. Whoa. I, I have got a bucks. ticket. Honestly, I think it was like 2015, the last time I got a ticket downtown. And that makes sense because I was still putting quarters in the damn machine. But now it's like, wow, wow they, they're a little bit raking it in. 20 huh? bucks. And is it more if you don't pay it right away? Oh, yeah. So I, <laughs> and this is where I fail at life. I have until 10 28. So I got 20 days. I guarantee you I'll pay that on the 27th. Um, <laughs> and then let's see. So yeah, twenty bucks there. If I pay by November twelfth, it gets bumped up to twenty five. Thereafter, forty five dollars. Forty five. Wow. Yeah. But this always happens to me. Does it happen to you? You go over one of the bridges in Boston with an easy yeah, pass. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a forty five cent toll, and it's like that ends up being like a fifty dollar like. Fees and everything yeah. because I just never get a chance to sit down and pay a forty-five cent fee. Well, here's where my luck, you know, helps me out. My mail, and this is actually kind of weird. My mail gets brought to me in New Bedford. Sometimes, if I have packages, I'll either have it sent here because they'll bring it right inside, or my parents. For some reason, there's one piece of mail that keeps going to my parents, and that's Easy Pass. For some reason, if I have to pay a toll. It gets sent to them. That's and probably where your license is? My license says New Bedford. Really? So it gets sent to Westport, and my mother will always be like, hey, I'll just pay it. I'll just pay it. And that's fine. I, I let her pay it. It feels real good. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if it wasn't for that, I would be in that same boat as you, where 45 cents turns into 45 bucks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, and then it's like, oh, well, when did I travel to Boston? When did I go back? Regardless, this twenty dollars is going to be a bit of an inconvenience for me, just because I a I don't want to pay it. B I feel like I was wrongfully done here. App did me real dirty on that one. And C is there a way to fight this? Because I've never there is yeah yeah there is. You can appeal it. You I, gotta you gotta go downtown. Because I feel you like you gotta go downtown and park, pay the toll. Oh come on, and go inside and talk. Unbelievable. to Unbelievable. So that's that's where I'm at right now in in my downtown endeavors. I got my. First, spe- uh, spe- my first parking ticket in a while, and I got done just dirty. Pay the twenty bucks. No, I, I pay feel it. Like, yeah, but I only it would have only been a dollar fifteen or a dollar twenty five cents if I would have. That's incentive to next time. Make sure. That, make sure that I double check. Yeah. It shouldn't be my problem, but I guess it is. So I don't know. I, I'll find it, and I'll, you know how it goes. It is seven fifty six. Phil Devitt is in the newsroom. We got to look at this morning's headlines. No bail for the 32-year-old man facing a murder charge after allegedly stabbing a 51-year-old man to death in New Bedford last week. Angel Avellino of Lynn was arraigned on Monday and ordered held. Police say Avellino attacked Jesus Torres on Acushton Avenue, leaving him with a fatal stab wound.
Authorities say a fire in New Bedford was accidental. Flames broke out in a house on Ludlow Street Sunday morning. One resident was treated for minor burns. Investigators believe a propane tank explosion may have been the cause. The Fall River Police Department is facing another leadership change. Mayor Paul Coogan has named Captain Kelly Furtado as interim chief replacing Paul Govin, who was reassigned. Govin's departure comes after he faced no confidence votes from police unions. This marks the latest in a series of leadership changes for the department in recent years. New England Patriots Captain Jabril Peppers faces charges, including assault and battery, assault strangulation, and possession of drugs. Police responded to an apartment in Braintree on Saturday morning following an altercation between Peppers and his girlfriend. He pleaded not guilty, was issued a no-contact order, and he's due back in court next month. Supplies from Massachusetts continue being shipped to western North Carolina, which was devastated by Hurricane Helene. Diapers, hygiene products, cleaning supplies, non-perishable food and water, all being trucked south from places including Bridgewater. Hurricane Milton is rapidly intensifying in the Gulf of Mexico and poses a major threat to Florida. Milton is forecast to make landfall late Wednesday or early Thursday. The hurricane has seen a dramatic increase in wind speed, reaching 180 miles per hour last night. And two Massachusetts educators are this year's recipients of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the discovery of microRNA. Victor Ambrose, a professor of natural science at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, and Gary Rovkin, a professor of genetics at Harvard, were announced as the winners for their work published back in 1993. MicroRNA is a class of molecules that help determine how organisms function, and their discovery opens up possibilities for fighting diseases. In sports, the Bruins locking up their goaltender with a long-term contract extension. Boston signing Jeremy Swayman to an eight-year, $66 million deal that makes him one of the NHL's highest-paid goalies. Season opener with the Florida Panthers tonight at 7. Celtics continue the preseason when they host the Philadelphia 76ers Saturday night at TD Garden. And the Patriots and Houston Texans in Week 6 action at Gillette Stadium on Sunday. Traffic and weather next. I'm Phil Devitt for Fun 107. By the way, Gazelle Kelly uh, checking in from New Bedford says, you can ask for forgiveness for a ticket if you are in good standing and haven't asked before. I haven't. This is the first time. I'm a good boy. She says, go to Elm Street, Elm Street. and ask. Right in the That's I'm... Kelly from New Bedford. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Good luck with that. Hey, Aaron Pools and Spas, great place to get hot tubs, to get that pool you've been dreaming of for your family. And this is a great time of year to, to think about that pool because right now they've got all the time in the world to sit down, go over a design for you, come up with the, the, the exactly the way it's going to look in your backyard. They've got a special program that shows you how the pool will look in your backyard. So that means if it's maybe a little too small, a little too big, maybe it's not shaped the right way, maybe you want to go with a kidney-shaped pool, something like that, Aaron Pools and Spas, give them a half hour, they're going to knock your socks off with this program and show you how much a pool can beautify that backyard. Get down there to Aaron Pools and Spas, their showroom. It's on Route 6 in Dartmouth. You can start that search by going online Aaron, Pools and Spas. Doctor, one of my favorite parts of the week when we get to put the spotlight on one of our Tuesday's children. And uh, our Tuesday's child this week is Jackson. He is five years old and he is doing so much better at uh, improving his communication skills, uh, learning to try some new foods, including vegetables, which is better than me. And uh, Jackson and today's Tuesday's child is brought to you by Greater New Bedford McDonald's, First Citizens Federal Credit Union, Kennedy Donovan Center, and Cottage Street. And we caught up with Jackson's social worker, and she told us this about him. Being around Jackson really makes me smile. It makes pretty much anybody who interacts with Jackson smile. He loves to laugh. His eyes kind of sparkle when he's excited. When you give him attention and you look at him in the eye and you start tickling him or giving him something, like some sort of toy that he likes to play with, his eyes light up. He loves to go to school. Every time he sees the bus come, he gets excited. He's not usually too sad about leaving school by the end of the day, but he's always excited to go. He's a lot more verbal. When he came to us, um, he was mainly just giving, making noises. And now he's asking for things. He'll uh, say, I want juice. 
please he's using please and thank you some of it's with prompting but a lot of it is uh, just with his own by his own initiative so I think a family that is willing to give him a lot of attention would be really good for Jackson and someone who has a lot of patience because he doesn't always express his needs in the same way that you would think or you might understand at first glance but as you get to know him you learn how he communicates and I think that's really important when you spend time with him and if you're patient and you give him a lot of attention he thrives on that so having a forever home with somebody would mean so much to him that he can feel secure feel loved i think he would do really well with that five-year-old jackson is looking for that forever home that she mentioned and if you think that might be your home well look up on fun107.com today and read up a little more about jackson or about adopting any of the children that we spotlight with Tuesday's Child. Again, it's brought to you by Grainer New Bedford McDonald's, First Citizens Federal Credit Union, Kennedy Donovan Center, and Cottage Street Motors. It is 827. And Phil Devitt has a look at headlines. A 32-year-old man was arraigned Monday on a murder charge in connection with a deadly stabbing in New Bedford last week. Angel Avellino of Lynn is accused of killing 51-year-old Jesus Torres. Avellino was ordered held without bail. Authorities say a fire in New Bedford was accidental. Flames broke out in a house on Ludlow Street Sunday around 10 a.m. One resident was treated for minor burns. Investigators believe a propane tank explosion may have been the cause. Fall River has a new interim police chief. Mayor Paul Coogan has appointed Captain Kelly Furtado to lead the department, replacing Paul Govin. Furtado, a 37-year veteran, has served in various roles, including school resource officer and detective. Govin's departure follows a no-confidence vote from police unions. The push to replace the Cape Cod bridges is taking another step in the right direction. Governor Healy's office announcing that it secured $350 million in federal funds after signing a memorandum of agreement with the Department of the Army and Federal Highway Administration to rebuild the Sagamore Bridge. Senator Warren and Congressman Keating both said the news is huge for the Cape's lifelines. The state has secured more than $1.7 billion in federal funds for the replacement so far. Category 5 Hurricane Milton is growing into a major problem as it's forecast to make landfall in Florida late Wednesday or early Thursday. It's gaining strength as it rolls across the Gulf of Mexico, now clocking it at 180 miles per hour. A 90 mile per hour wind increase on Monday alone. Counties along Florida's west coast have been ordered to evacuate as over 50 are under a state of emergency. And it will soon cost more to play the Mega Millions lottery game. Starting in April, Mega Millions tickets will cost players $5 each. Other changes to the game include a prize multiplier being built in and randomly generated on every ticket sold. In sports, the Bruins are in Florida to play the Panthers tonight at 7. Celtics host the Philadelphia 76ers in the preseason on Saturday. And the Patriots host the Houston Texans at Gillette on Sunday. Traffic and weather next. I'm Phil Devitt for Fun 107. Me too. I, I understand. But some level of common sense must come into play here too because as my kids are getting older, they're supposed to be taking the reins and, you know, taking the responsibility of some of these things and they're not. And it's like, well, what can you do? So you understand like this is privacy thing and all this, right? I do. Yes. So, it amuses me that, like, when my son turned 13 or whatever it was, suddenly, like, they expected him to be able to book appointments with the doctor and keep them. At 13. Yeah. I'm like, okay. have you met a 13-year-old boy ever in your life? Like, That's do you really think happen. this is going to happen? No way. So, anyway, so there, there's that. I've always kind of, like, laughed at that thought. But now, my, you know, my daughter's off at college. And she recently had one of those sleep tests. Oh, she's yeah. not sleeping well. So they, you know, the doctor set her up with this sleep test, which now it's done at home. So they send you this device. You hook it up and you, you sleep. I think it might even hook up to your phone, like Bluetooth or whatever. And they, they do whatever they do, and it's fine. It all worked out fine. And then they sent the bill. I didn't know it was the bill. It was just a piece of mail for my daughter. So I throw it on the side, and, you know, when she gets it, she gets it. So time goes by. You know, she's away. Oh, yeah. Get another bill. I don't get I don't know it's a bill. This is addressed to my daughter. I don't know. I don't recognize the company because it's some random, you know, sleep device. I don't know. I have no idea what this thing is. 
So then they start calling my daughter. Oh, boy. So she's like many other young women. They don't answer the phone. Nobody who's young ever answers the phone anymore. Like, it goes directly to voicemail, and it's never to be heard from again. Like, it just goes into a out of space, and that's the end of it. In all fairness, though, if a number pops up that I don't know, I'm probably not that's going right. to answer it. So Just saying. This goes on for months now oh, no. where they're trying to call her to collect. It was like 300 bucks, and it's just not happening because you're talking to somebody who has no money. She's not paying this bill. Yeah. It's just crazy. So then, so then she eventually listens to the voicemail. She's like, oh, Dad. I owe I owe three hundred thirty five dollars to this to the sleep lab company. I'm like, oh, okay. So she gives me the number. I call the number to, to pay. They can't talk to me. They gotta talk to her. I'm like, Why? you're kidding me. I'm trying to pay you money. You're like you are looking for three hundred thirty five bucks. I'm here for it. But they I don't have her account number or anything, and they don't want to talk to me because it's not me. That's weird. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, a little bit back. She's 18? She's 19. 19. All right. So dad's out of the scene now. Uh, She's an official adult. So I want to be like, you know what? You're right. Go talk to her about it. Oh, no. (laughs) Are you looking to set an example? No, it's not her fault. It's just, I just am frustrated with it. Yeah. Like. It's a backward system. It's a, it's it's a a flawed system. Yeah. You know, I'm the, I'm the one who's paying it. And I Let don't me want to pay speak the bill. on behalf of anybody like, or take everybody. Take my money. But parents should have some kind of say. And then they're like, oh, HIPAA violation, this and that. I mean, I don't I don't get it. It's it. I understand where it's coming from. Yeah. But there must be some level of common sense with this stuff. Like, do they really expect her to pay the 335 So my mother, before I transferred my mail to New Bedford, she'd be like, hey, a bill came in. Or at least I think it's a bill. She says, there's a piece of mail that looks important. Do you want me to open it? Yeah. I always say, yes, I don't care. I got nothing to hide. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? Uh, so I usually, that's that's what we'll do. Um, but I just, I think that a little bit of this lies on you for not being too nosy about her mail. I didn't think much about it. You did good. You respected her privacy. I really didn't think. I wasn't even looking for a hero here. Like, I just threw it to the side. I'm like, oh, she'll get it when she gets it. I wasn't really even thinking about it. Yeah. But, I mean. But eventually, I. I, Oh, I was going to say, yeah. So, did you end up paying it? I conference called her in and said, talk to this lady. So, they'll take the money. That's pretty smart. Yeah. But how did the lady know it was actually her? Exactly. I don't know. I should have just got my wife and said, hey, just say you're her. (laughs) Fun 107. 14, something like that.